Abuja. For more on the security situation and efforts put in place by the federal government, I have joining me on the program President and Founder Jago Solutions International Canada, Bayo Adedoshu, and the security expert Olatun Bosun Abolaiwa. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the program. Let's begin with you, Mr. Abolaiwa. The Nigerian Senate on Tuesday passed a vote of confidence on security chiefs. What's your reaction to that amidst worsening insecurity in the country? All right, then. Uh, thank you very much. And good evening, uh, my colleague across the line. Um, I wouldn't want to be, comment too uh, heavily on that resolution because it was a resolution of people who sat in the same room for nine hours with some people. But uh, if I'm going to take it from outside point of view, uh, I can look at some of the gains of our security operatives in the city, our security um, agency in the cities, and the news that is coming from across the border too, like the suspect that was arrested in Niger with that one uh, millionaire trying to buy arms. There are various arrests all over FCT, arrests in Lagos, arrests in our uh, shoe state, all happening within the period of 72 hours. I think I want to say that effort is being pushed in the right direction to ensure that, again, the only problem is that will this arrest lead to charges? Will this arrest lead to gathering of more intelligence to fight more? It's what we need to look at now. But if you ask me with what I've seen in the last 72 hours, I think it's okay and it is fair enough to pass a vote of confidence until further notice. Community over there reacting to the security situation back home. Uh, thank you very much for having me on the program. It is really commendable that the Senate actually decided to have an interactive session with the security chief. This is something that I've always talked about that there should always be engagement between all the interacting agencies of government and the apparatus of government. When an arm of government like the, like the legislature has reached out to the service chiefs, of course we don't know what they have exchanged in their closed door session because sensitive information would have been exchanged, would have passed between the two, between the two of them. But let, one thing I always say is, every country has security problem. No doubt about that. And security is a collective responsibility. It is not something we leave in the hands of the security agencies in any country. The first line of defense in any country is the, is the citizen. When citizens actually take up the responsibility of securing their environment, their immediate environment, because when you have the attitude of see something, say something, you begin to secure your environment. You begin to help the government. But when we think it is the responsibility of the government, it is the responsibility of the, of the security agencies, are we not the ones that are actually causing the security infractions? Of course, it is the citizens that are causing this security infraction. And it is also the citizens that would need to step up the game to assist in curbing this security infraction. When we, be, when we start seeing things and we start seeing what we see, because local intelligence gathering is very important. Everywhere in the, in the so-called, in the Senate climbs that we always like to refer to, they are relatively, relatively safe simply because Everybody knows everybody in their locality. I know you, you, you may not be talking with, to each other, but you know those who live on your streets. You see them, you see their cars and all that. And you know when there is something strange. I've had a couple of times that I saw a particular car that was going up and down for a few minutes. I decided to wait to see actually what's, 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 a, what's going on with that vehicle. And apparently my neighbor to my right was also worried that this looks strange. This doesn't look like a regular visitor to the area. So 
we begin we began to alert each other that pay attention to this and the way the particular vehicle was driving gave much to to be worried about when we begin to have that kind of sensitivity within our locality within our environment we'll be securing and this issue of security the way it is blown and i will not try to put it on the media but at times the media also overblows it do we know how many the level of security challenges canada has as a country we call it kidnapping in nigeria they call it abduction here in canada every one hour there is a case of a mis missing child there is a case of a missing person in canada in one part of the canada of canada or the other but the media does not amplify this because they know what image and perception does in the life of a country this is where our media needs to show more responsibility in what is being projected whether you say it or you don't say it the security infraction has taken place all right last year in the u.s 224,000 american citizens died as a result of gun violence that did that turn america to a failed country did that make america an unsafe country it was not overblown all right so, so it's Okay, okay. Uh, well, I hear what you have said, but you would also agree that in some of these cases, for instance, in the Abuja situation, the Akadria family, it was this blowing out in the media that got people talking about the situation and that somehow helped them, you know, uh, get a breakthrough in that particular situation. But I get your point about not overblowing it. And that's the same reason that the media does not only talk about the challenges, but also looks at proffering solutions, which is what we look forward to doing on the program today. So if I may just quickly turn to Mr. Abolariwa, you have mentioned earlier that there have been concerted efforts by all involved, security operatives at different uh, stratum. But then uh, you would wonder why these cases of insecurity persist despite these efforts by heads of security agencies. All right, we're talking about Abuja as a metropolitan city, and I wouldn't want us to focus too much on Abuja. Abuja is still a city that is still coming up with a lot of uncompleted building, and it's also a magnet for everybody, not only from Nigeria, but from our bordering country, to come and settle. The infrastructures are good, and uh, people want to live where it is good, so does criminals. So, uh, what I think is really, really at stake here is proactiveness of the government agencies who are in charge of security and also the citizens too, like my colleague said. Uh, the citizen has a lot of role to play. And whether we need to do more sensitization to bring them to that level is another thing we need to look at. I only hope the effort we're seeing at the moment it's not the usual fire brigade approach to quelling situation when everybody when everybody seems to focus on you. That is talking about the security agencies. There is still a lot of non-kinetic approach that needs to be done uh, in the area of sensitizing more people on how to take care of their environment, sensitizing them to see, see something and say something. And finally, all other arms of human endeavor. We have a huge religious organization, both in Islam and in Christianity. Why are we not engaging them? What are we doing to carry them along? Because the grand use being used by reasonable good people is the same grant that is being used by criminals. Why are we not taking advantage of this and entering churches, entering mosques, to create a reorientation project. Government seems to be failing in this area, and the failure has gone too, 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 too far, too deep, that the children born when we started all this problem, 2008, 2009, are now old enough to even be a criminal from the indices of children that are the people that have been arrested. You are seeing 12 and 14 years old children committed. So we have a child that was born in 2000 nine ready and able to commit abuse against his own state that means that the strategic failure 
on the part of the citizenry, whether they are sensitized or not, is something that we really need to look at and consider. All right, gentlemen, let's take a moment. We'll come back and continue from there. Stay with us. Bola Hamed Chinobu, do solemnly swear. Thank you for staying with us. I've been speaking with the founder and president, Jago Solutions International Canada, Bayo Adedoshu, and security expert, Ola Tumboso Abolayo, about the security situation in Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you very much for staying with us. Let's talk about the issue of unified system of identification. On Tuesday, the Senate made a call to the Minister of Interior to you know, ensure that these IDs we have are unified. You know that we have the NIN, we have the BVN, and one would have actually thought that tracking criminal elements would be easy, but that has not exactly been the case. Just how critical is this element, Mr. Bolanyoa? Oh, well, it's a very, very vital element, and it's one of the basic infrastructure that we seem to be missing out on. Uh, it is also not the duty of government agencies alone. Don't let us get it uh, wrong. You see, <clears throat> there are things that government are able to do and there are things that government are not able to do. What happened, the disaster that seems to be happening in Nigeria in between this is something that is very, very appalling. So what I'm trying to say now is that while we are making effort to call the, on the Honorable Minister for Interior to unify this uh, ID, what, are the, what is happening at the citizenry level? Does everybody in a church, in a mosque, and in every gathering also have a machinery to do this? Does tenants, the landlords make their tenants submit their IDs and other information in order for them to be well tracked? Do you know who your tenant is? All the criminals that are operating in Nigeria today are actually somebody's tenant or somebody that is staying on somebody's property or living in an estate or part of an estate association. So it, we must create this effort where government effort coming from the top and human effort which controls about 200 and something million people meet themselves <coughs> in the middle. So it is a very, very vital, uh, vital factor of, uh, uh, of sustaining and harmonizing human intelligence if every aspect of organization are able to or an organization controlling human endeavor are able to ensure that this exercise is carried all through and across board. But human intelligence, which we refer to as human in security, is very, very vital. And whatever it takes is what any government and people need to help put together and sustain. All right, human intelligence. And that's one thing that you both have stressed. But let me come to Mr. Dedoshu. What's your take on amnesty for repentant criminals, especially drafting them into our security apparatus? I, that is certainly not under the United Nations Convention. It is only people you capture in a warfare that you can rehabilitate that are covered by the United Nations convention when if you are a terrorist and you are captured in action or if you are a kidnapper or whatever i don't subscribe to this idea of just slapping people on the wrist that does not serve as a deterrent even in the even in the senior climb it's not done that way you don't grant amnesty to people who are actually have identified themselves as enemy of the society. The full rot of the law has to take it, the law has to take its natural course. And this is something I always tell people. I'm glad we are bringing this up. We are the problem to our security, security situation in Nigeria. It is only in Nigeria 
that somebody will commit a crime and he feels emboldened that he has somebody he could call somewhere who will effect his release. And when that culture continues to fester, it simply means we are breeding more criminals. When we don't allow the law to take its full course, it simply gives the impression that it is lucrative, it is encouraged to be a criminal because eventually you will get you, you will go scot free. And when we look at this, let us also look at our judicial system. Our judicial system, as it were today, is a far cry from the standard it should be. Where we think, okay, because the law says this, somebody who stole billions and you now said you should go to jail for two, three years, and you give him the option of paying 500,000 naira back to avoid going to jail. But somebody who steals bully or bread does not even have, is not able to meet uh, bail conditions, is not able to be bailed, and eventually you slammed him with seven years imprisonment. When you look at this distortion in the system, you will see that as the human component of of partiality, of not giving fair dispensation, not dispensing judgment fairly and squarely, gives us, puts us to be in this country that we are today. I don't subscribe to any amnesty. What, can, what amnesty are you giving? To who? What, on what basis? What are the parameters that m makes you to think you want to give amnesty? Are you simply saying you are encouraging them and you are sending them back into the community? Remember one thing. It is what is inside of you that you continue to do. Even when you are rehabilitated back into the society, you now have opportunity to serve within the security sector. It simply means you have been vested with more power, with more weapon, with more intelligence to actually carry out your nefarious activities on a larger scale. And right. this is where I'll quickly chip in this if you allow me. The home is very important. All right. Because the home has lost its foundation of bringing up children, of instilling discipline. Gone are the days when parents used to check on, on, on their kids and it starts with little things. When, right, you, bring home, yeah, when yes. you bring parents home in those days, are, you need to account for where, you, where that parents came from. So the family today, has a critical role to play too. It's not just about very, government. Very critical because role. it's the families that raise you. people who get to be in government and you know, govern the state. Uh, let, let's get a thought from uh, Mr. Abolarinwa. Uh, you, know, you have spoken about collective responsibility and the place of local intelligence gathering. But we have heard about collusion, collusion between security operatives and some of these criminals. So how do we strike a balance? How do we purge the system and ensure that people can trust the system, the persons in the system, and give them information that would help us tackle this? All right. Um, currently, one thing we really lack across board to security agency of Nigeria is the issue of accountability and fiscal responsibility. So it means that anybody sitting on any desk can do certain things and it is not recorded anywhere for proper audition uh, in the nearest future. I don't know how the appraisals are being conducted, but if your action as a policeman, as a DSS man, as a soldier, if your action is not recorded on any system and is not appraised or audited, later for you to take certain responsibility, it means that what we're going to have in the nearest future is kills. So what I think is really, really wrong why we are having this collision is just because nobody is being held responsible for certain failures in operations. In, in you, can, you, you can collect bribe and let criminal go. You can switch cases around just because you are in charge of it as an IPO and make the person that is guilty go to jail and the person that is culpable go free. All these are as a result of lack of accountability. Oh. And I'm not going to blame anybody for this, but for the general public. Uh, I was at a Nigerian Bar Association conference. Mr. Bolaiwa, you have about 30 people. seconds. 30 seconds, Mr. Bolaiwa, yeah. to wrap on that. Let us have accountability. Let us have fiscal responsibility on the part of the security operative and let people to make sure that they put things down in writing when they are dealing with the security operative. 
to make them more accountable and responsible. Thank right, you. Gentlemen, I must sincerely appreciate you for sharing your time with us and talking to us on the program. President and founder, Jago Solutions International Canada, Bayo Adedushu, and security expert, Olatumbo Swambolaiwa. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very Thank much you. for having me. For that, our program today, do watch a report.